Okay, a few things going on today. A, I got stormed out last night and I got afraid of the lightning. So I came in before I was able to fully test the 32 glide stab. I got hair in my mouth. Okay, and so tonight I'm gonna test it again. I wanna say this, here's what my gut tells me. The wing is flat, like the surf wings. The first stab I ever had was a surf stab. I think it was a 48 and they're flat. This looks just like it, identical, but smaller, 32 centimeters. I think there was a mislabeling problem going on at lift or someone thought, well, let's make some of the glides have up, upturned curvy, curvy wing tips and let's make some of them look just like surfs. They're basically surfs, but we're gonna call them glides. I'm so sure I'm right about this that I will bet a root beer float, which is my general wagering token, that we will see lift come back on their website with a new glide series that are probably close to the same sizes or the same sizes that just have upturned wings. I'm telling you that's what's happened and they should have been honest about it. They really should have. It is a little bit faster and that's what I was looking for. I totally missed the upturned wing. Like there's the, the, those things help the, the board turn without producing flat turbulence. That's what I assume is going on. I haven't run it through a wind chamber or anything but when I rotate the board left and right I feel it skipping a beat here and there right which I don't feel with the 36 glide that actually has the upturned wings and you say well it's smaller it'll do no it, I'm telling you it, it ain't that it, it it's about the shape of that wing also I think that that the, that not only does it help it kind of rotate by release by helping release the pressure with those upturned wing tips I think that it also because there's now two axes, it kind of creates a channel so it sticks just a little bit better. I would really like to, I would like to try a smaller version of my 36 glide. And that is what I thought I was buying. This this next part's for lift. Okay, so everybody just, just mute for the next 60 seconds or so. Probably longer. But I'm gonna give lift some free advice. My clients pay a lot for this, so listen up. I think we both know you screwed up. You poorly planned this, this, the branding of the glide steps. You, you, you did, or you, or someone made a printing error. Be honest with your customers. Just say, hey guys, we screwed up. We put the wrong label on these. So we're going to let you have them for 99 bucks. So if you're looking for, for a, a surf, that's smaller than the than the surf you've got, and it, it, you can get it for a song. You should have just said that. The result is I thought I was gonna get the same glide profile that I got with my 36 glide, but I didn't. You know what happens next? The next time I'm thinking about buying something from you, I know I can't trust your website to make sense. I cannot trust that I'm gonna get what I asked for. I don't, no one wants to go through the hassle of returning it. To, honestly, you, you really made a mistake here. You're going to lose sales because of this. Like I am less likely to go get up at night and be like, oh, you know, I totally want to try this combo. Wait, am I going to get what I think I'm going to get? And there is no reason why your photo department could not shoot a profile shot or a rear shot of, of your wings so people can see what the curvature is. There's also no reason you can't use something like Sketchfab or any other 3D wrapper. You've already got 3D views of your boards that are completely unnecessary. This is a case where that technology is necessary. Fix this. There, there is no reason for it. At this stage of the game, your customers, or at least the bulk of them, we're invested in you. Like, we're advocates for you. Treat us like that. Help us make the best decisions. You flubbed this one, and it ain't unrepairable or unforgivable or anything, but I did not get what I thought I was buying. And, and if you look at the rationale that I used, if it's named a glide, and I own a glide, and it's shaped like this, and I own a surf, and they're shaped like this, why shouldn't I assume I'm going to get the same thing but smaller? That doesn't make any damn sense, and there's nothing in the description that would tell me otherwise. I just honestly sometimes don't quite understand how you guys screw up the easy stuff. You, you really do a great job at the stuff that was really hard, but you mess up the easy stuff, right? This is a piece of cake. This is a thing that 
that like my daughter's Instagram store doesn't screw up, right? Like get, get on top of it, fix it. If you create confusion with your customers, they're not going to have confidence when they buy stuff on the Lyft website. Everything written about, about the differences in the components aren't always accurate. The idea that a, a shorter mass is better for a beginner is completely bunk. That is bullshit. There is no difference that I can tell from learning to ride a tall or a short mast. You notice the difference in a tall and a short mast when you're good enough to remain on foil. You don't breach as much. That's the only difference. And then when you get much, much more pro or advanced you can bank harder and sharper because you can you have more distance to play with you, you, you can you can bank without touching the edge of the board because you've got more distance between the water and your board what other things have i read on there oh i bought things that were advertised to be more efficient and they were actually less efficient heck you know like the gen 4 batteries then my opinion they are in no way different from the other batteries. I cannot tell any difference. They charge about the same rate. They, I, I deplete them at about the same rate. They're, they're better looking, they're easier to carry. I don't trust them enough to ever rest them vertically on my dock because I feel like they'll fall and I, I pretty much handle them with kick gloves. But you, you gotta do a better job of this. Like, like flight's gonna eat you guys alive. If you don't, you were the pioneers of this. You deserve this. There's a lot of things you do well. These are amazing, right? This is a great piece of kit right here. This simple gen whatever one controller, like it's awesome. I, I replaced the battery once a season. This is amazing. It's light, it floats. For anyone who doesn't know, there are actually actually brands that thought it was a good idea to not make their controllers float. I don't know what planet of insanity they're living on, but that's nuts. So you've done a lot right. But look, flight is definitely catching up to you guys. You know, their battery record, at least, you know, it's better for catastrophic thermal runoff, right? I mean, as far as I can tell it is, maybe they just do a better job of burying the, the fires. I, I, I don't know. You know, they're their nano battery is definitely lighter than your small battery. Their, their styling is great. Their logo kicks the crap out of yours. I've actually heard from people who said, oh, I was going to buy a flight because I just liked the way the logo looked better. I know that sounds insane. And maybe you're thinking like, I don't even want them as a customer. Okay. I mean, I'm never going to put your logo on the back of my car because it looks religious and it looks very effeminate. I don't like the logo and I'm not the only one. It looks like stuff I did in Mac paint when I was 13. It's just not good. Theirs looks more futuristic. Their, their motor is in a much better, their motor and their prop is, is lower than yours, which gives everyone the ability to, to come out of the water higher and do more and more deep carves without breaching the propulsion. They have a lot going for them. So I, I'm not a customer who is loyal. I, I'm always just loyal to my own values. And I'm, I'm always going to buy what I think is going to provide me the greatest amount of enjoyment for the best value and be the least pain in the ass to own. If flight gets rid of their ridiculous warranty program where you have to ship the board into them every six months on your dime, which is I think $400 both ways, and then pay for the service after the warranty is over. You need to do that Wait, like you need to actually send your board in just to maintain your warranty or, or they will get rid of your warranty. That's nuts. They will get rid of that, I'm sure. No, nothing this simple should need a professional to in, in, yeah, investigate it to make sure it's going to stay within its warranty. That's crazy. I don't know what they were thinking with that. And most of the flight customers I've talked to, they have been very adamant that that's not true. You don't have to do that. Then I show them in the warranty documentation 
that that's true. And then they run away and leave the debate online. And they're, they're like, I'm like, wait, where did you go? We were having, we were discussing this and they were like, what? I think that they were running and be like, what the hell? I got to send this thing in. And they probably were like on month five and they were like, oh my God, I got to send this thing in. How much does it cost to ship a board back to wherever the hell they are? Oh my God, that's expensive. I think that's what happened. And they stopped talking to me. So I've never heard it resolved, but most people I think just don't know about it. That's crazy. Another thing is, and, and maybe they've already changed this, or maybe they've changed with the new Newsome design, I'm not sure. But the, the throttle distance, like, you know, being able to squeeze this this far and have so much control over speed, that's one other advantage that, that Lyft, is, as far as I know, Lyft currently has. Theirs is way, way too digital. And I really like feathering the throttle. So I, I gotta say that's the other advantage. But if they resolve those two things, it is, it is likely that my next purchase would, would be with flight because I do see, I do see some design advantages, especially their, their prop placement. I, I do prefer their styling. You know, I, I would need to do a deep investigation, but yeah, I mean, that, that's where I'm, I, I mean, I can tell they're catching up. I can tell by the social media. I can tell by the, the riders that are on them are doing some pretty impressive stuff and and their marketing is just significantly better you guys like lyft you you, you absolutely have to stop showing people riding in a straight line slowly in your adverts and you got to stop people sh- carrying the boards around stop putting your largest board in the hands of little girls in bikinis and having them carry them it really does make the your efoil seem like a cheap beach toy when you do that like a stand-up paddle board that's what i think of when i see that so most people think of when they find out how expensive they are they're like why the hell would i ever buy that they're oh i can go as slow as a stand-up paddle board i can carry it as easily as a stand-up paddle board i guess i'll just buy a stand-up paddle board because i can get one of those for a few hundred bucks that's what it looks like i know it's hard to see yourself from out from from inside of you but that is what everyone sees because that's what you've shown them. Hire a much better marketing director. Hire a really good chief strategic officer. You, you really do need one. You need someone who's going to obsessively think about these details and be able to continually think about what do you look like, sound like, and how are you interpreted by your customer. And I don't, I just don't feel like that's a thing that you're doing very well at all right now. And it will diminish what your company is capable of doing. And I just, I I do care about you, Lyft. I do. I want you to do well, but it is pretty clear that e-foiling maxed out an interest a year ago, like just based on search trend. And we saw the death of many eFoil and other electric board sport companies, right? They deserve to go down. I'm not saying you will go down, but I am saying you're going to likely in the next two years experience a reduce in the growth of your market, especially based on what I'm seeing from your marketing and your just your, your general marketing communications are really not good. I told you to fire your regional distributor in Minnesota. He is, he is now gone and not replaced by anyone. Last I heard, the regional distribution has now been, has just been all consolidated and it's run by some guy from Tennessee I've never met. Put me in the water and the St. Croix River at a really big event in Stillwater, Minnesota. The birthplace of Minnesota. Put a lift booth on the shore where people can sign up for lessons and buy boards and get literature. And that is what Lyft needs to do. Better yet, put a course in the water and sponsor a race and get a bunch of e-foilers out there. But definitely get someone who rips on your boards, on a pro, and show them how much they kick ass. And you do that in every, every little tourist city where there are thousands of people coming through on a hot day in the summer, and you will crush it at that local level and from there it will grow but you do nothing you do literally nothing i have seen nothing
me questions, bring your best I've got the answers, I'll pass the test